in continuation of uh, our topic in electrostatics today we are going to deal with the coulomb's law and also its vector form say consider two charges q1 q2 separated by r distance q1 q2 are two point charges separated by r unit there is a force of attraction or repulsion here upon the diagram both are positive so can you can you tell is it repulsive or attractive yes what you tell is correct it is repulsive because like charges so the law says the force of attraction or repulsion if there is a like charges it will be repulsive force unlike charges it will be an attractive force so the force of attraction or repulsion between two stationary charges remember the charges to be stationary if it is in motion or mobile it the law does not hold good remember only for stationary charges the law holds good so the force of attraction or repulsion between two stationary charges is directly proportional to the product of magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them both put together the new mathematical form f proportional q1 q2 f inversely varies with the r square combining both we learn that f is equal to some constant in the q1 q2 by r square by reducing constant the proportionality is removed what is this k the electrostatic constant or the constant proportionality is given by the value 1 by 4 by epsilon naught what is epsilon naught epsilon naught is called the perm permittivity electrostatic permittivity of air free space or vacuum air is a medium vacuum is absence of anything how for both the same is the value you may think actually there will be a difference but the difference is highly marginal so we don't take the difference it is equally very, very small so in respect of air or free space or any vacuum or vacuum the permittivity is otherwise called absolute permittivity say this word absolute which means not depending on any medium independent of any medium we don't take the medium into consideration in such a case it is called absolute permittivity so this absolute permittivity is given by 8.854 delta minus square coulomb square per newton per meter square so this epsilon not is 8.854 delta minus square coulomb square per newton per meter square and for fc or not don't we think the value is highly complex in nature in course of solving a problem if this comes in denominator it will take very long time to simplify but fortunately the whole of 1 by 4 pi fc or not is given by 9 10.9 which is an easier value for simplification so 1 by 4 pi fc or not is 9 10.9 you will be Newton meter square per Coulomb square because one by four pi epsilon naught has got Newton meter square Coulomb per Coulomb square. Epsilon naught is a reciprocal of this Coulomb square per Newton per meter square. For problem sake, I have given another tips. Epsilon naught can also be given as from this formula one by thirty six pi ten power nine. Coulomb square per newton per meter square, which can be used wherever the problem it was pi value. Pi pi will be cancelled, so we did by not. And the sometimes the reciprocal of epsilon naught may also be useful in future. One by epsilon naught is equal to one point one two three ten power eleven. You want to just one decimal, you can remember eleven eleven one point one into ten power eleven. Now, what about the permittivity of any medium? It means Both the charges are placed in air or free space. It is absolute permittivity because medium plays a role in electrostatic force. So medium divided by it will be different. 
So what will happen to a medium? In any medium, both the charges are placed. See here, permittivity of the medium is given by epsilon. Can it be obtained from a table? No. Physical constant table will not contain permittivity of any medium. Instead, relative permittivity is given in all the clock tables or all the materials around us. So, epsilon r is relative permittivity which can be used to determine epsilon because epsilon permittivity of any medium is product of absolute permittivity and relative permittivity. So, what is the formula of relative permittivity? It is the ratio of permittivity of the medium to permittivity of free space. So, epsilon r equal to epsilon by epsilon naught. By cross multiplying you get epsilon. For example, epsilon r of water is 80, 80. But you multiply 80 by 8.8 so forth into a minus 12, you get permittivity of water. What will happen to epsilon r of air? <coughs> Again, go back. See, epsilon r of any medium is epsilon of that medium divided by epsilon of air. Relative permittivity has got a famous name, directly constant. So, this relative permittivity has no unit. Why? Because uh, it is a ratio of the same quantities, the unit will get cancelled. Now, what will happen to epsilon r of air? How oh, we got uh, epsilon r of air as 1? Now, imagine epsilon r of any medium is epsilon of given medium divided by epsilon of air. But epsilon of air is epsilon air by epsilon air. What happened? They will get cancelled, you get 1. That is why epsilon r of r is 1. Not only that, epsilon r of vacuum is also 1. Let us repeat this statement again. I have very closely observed. Listen to my words. Epsilon r of vacuum is 1. Epsilon r of nothing is 1. Epsilon r of nothing itself is 1. It means epsilon r of something will be greater than 1. Again you repeat, epsilon r of nothing itself is 1. Therefore epsilon r of something, something means any substance in the entire universe. So epsilon r of any substance must be greater than 1. So the least possible value of relative permittivity is always 1. If any pro in any problem, if you get the epsilon r less than 1 or decimal value 0 0.8, 0 0.7, or negative value never will be correct, it is wrong. So always epsilon r minimum value is 1 and the maximum it may be anything. For information I am telling, the maximum value is infinity in respect of conductors. For example, for copper conductor epsilon r is infinity. So here, uh, let us again substitute this epsilon naught in the Coulomb's formula. Look here. According to Coulomb's law, it is air. Epsilon r represents permittivity of air. So obviously this is force in air. Electrostatic force between Q1, Q2 in air. This is the formula. What happened to a medium? Force in medium, let us call Fm. Will you not get 1 by 4 by epsilon? But don't you think epsilon can be replaced by epsilon naught into epsilon r? So this formula would become epsilon naught, epsilon naught the denominator. Let us call it a second equation. Divide first by second equation. Everything will get cancelled. If cancelled you get Fa by F from force in air by force in medium is equal to right hand side. Will you not get epsilon naught? So you have got another fantastic formula for epsilon naught. Already we had one more formula. Epsilon naught is epsilon by epsilon naught. Here again there is one more formula epsilon r is Fa by Fm. Force in air by force in medium is equal to directly constant of the medium. Very useful for numerical problems. Now let us define definition of one Coulomb. You know unit of charge is Coulomb. Suppose in this formula Q1, Q2, both the charges are having same magnitude 1 coulomb each and they are 1 meter apart or equal to 1 meter. 
What happened if you substitute 1, 1, here also 1, you will not get a figure of 5, 4, 5, 0 or not, which will be just 9, 10 power 9. That is how I got a figure to 9, 10 power 9 Newton. Based on this, now go to the slide on the screen. We have the definition for 1 coulomb. Now, now follow the board. 1 coulomb is that amount of charge that repels an equal and similar charge with a force of 9, 10 power 9 Newton when placed in vacuum at a distance of 1 meter from me. That is how the definition goes for unit of charge or 1 coulomb of charge. Now, the next topic. Same Coulomb's law, let us reproduce the vectorial notation. Consider two charges Q1 Q2 separated by R. Because both the charges are like charges, that will be equal to C force. So this is F12. How we should read, you know, this is force exerted on 1 by 2. Here also, F21, how do we force exerted on 2 by 1? Now, what is force exerted on 1 by 2? It is given by this formula. F21 is given by the first formula. Let us talk about F21. F21, force exerted on 2 by 1 is equal to, as per the Coulomb's law, 1 by 4 by epsilon, not Q1 could be R square into A, because this is the vectorial form. We multiply this scalar into a unit vector R12. How to read R12? R12 is distance measured from 1 to 2. Again, I repeat, R12 how to read? Unit vector R distance measured from 1 to 2. So here R1 to 2. But what is R1 to 1 to R1 to 2 is equal to this unit vector R12 is equal to R1 to vector by is a modulus value that is R, scalar R. Similarly, what is F12? 1 by 4 by epsilon R, 2 1 to R square in R21. That means distance measured from 2 to 1. This is also unit vector. The expansion unit vector vector is similarly given here. But don't you think both these two unit vectors are opposite direction? So they are negatively equal, which means R21 is equal to minus of R12. Again, R21 unit vector is equal to minus of R12 unit vector. If we substitute this value in these two vectorial equations, we get F21 is equal to minus F12. What does it mean? Both the forces are equal in magnitude opposite direction, which means Newton's third law of motion is also getting validated. Newton's third law is proved for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So Coulomb's vectorial form we come to a conclusion that the net force is zero. So F21 is equal to minus of F12. So this is how we can explain Coulomb's law. My dear children, next in class we will talk about electric field and the value of electric field at a point would be a fine charge. All the best. Namaste.